All right, guys. So if you're joining us again, uh, hopefully we do not have any <laughs> audio issues. These things can happen sometimes. We do have yeah. a studio that's shared by a lot of brand managers here. Um, but going back into it, guys, for you guys just joining, we are going to talk about the UMX Alteryx. It's a recently new release for mm -hmm. the eFly brand. Uh, super exciting product. We're going to do the live unboxing and assembly video of it. So we're going to go ahead and let Jason get started, and I'm going to go ahead and get this stuff uh, pull up your guys' comments. And if you guys have any questions, we will be monitoring that for you guys. Yes, hopefully uh, the unboxing and assembly goes well. This is a uh uh, maybe somewhat complex model to assemble. It could so take it could a little be time. risky, could take a little bit of time. Uh, just kidding, you guys will see here in a minute. But again, really quick to reiterate, we are live on Facebook right now. Uh, Cody has taken a minute to share this over to some of our other social media pages. You may be seeing this later on YouTube, uh, and he is now monitoring the comments just to see if there's any questions that might come up that we don't address while we're doing the unboxing, sure. assembly, and then ultimately the discussion of the product. Uh, and as he mentioned, this is the new E-Flight UMX Ultrix, which is one of our first Ultra Micros in a long time. And we're excited about it because it's very, very unique. First and foremost, you can see it's a twin motor platform. It's kind of a delta wing platform as well, so it may be similar to some other models we've had in the past. Uh, it may look somewhat similar, but it's not. It's a completely different airframe. It's not based on any of our existing airframes. It was optimized for a combination of things. It was optimized for good smooth sport flying, great handling characteristics overall, but then also on top of that, 3D aerobatic flying. Right. So it's what we consider our most uniquely capable, but also most durable Ultramico yet. Right. And the reason it's the most durable is because it's actually made out of EPP foam, which we've never used before for an Ultramicro. Our original Ultramicros were primarily EPS foam, uh, which is the more typical styrofoam that most people are used to. Very lightweight, uh, relatively stiff, but also somewhat brittle. Uh, it's easy to break, uh, but all, the airplanes are pretty light, so it was hard to break them. Right. But when we went into uh, some of the larger sizes or some of the higher performance models, like for example, our UMX F27, we made that out of EPO foam. EPO is a lot more rubbery, a lot more flexible, so to speak, than EPS foam. The downside is it weighs a bit more. Right. Uh, and then we decided to do something even more different with this one. We went with EPP foam, which is even more durable than EPO foam. A little bit more flexible, a little bit more bouncy, a little bit heavier, um, but we worked on the density of this airframe to make sure that it wasn't overweight, but at the same time retained a lot of the great qualities that we get from EPP foam. So a lot of great things going on in this model. So for those that haven't seen it yet, it is ultra micro, it is twin, and it is brushless motor powered. In the past, almost all of our 1S powered ultra micros were brushed motors. This is twin brushless motors that run off of a single 1S 500 milliamp battery with the JST connector. Uh, you could also fit a little bit smaller battery, a little bit bigger battery, depending on what you might have. As long as it fits in the battery compartment, as long as the CG is okay, as long as you got a JST connector on there, and it can supply the current. We've already seen a couple videos from some customers that have gotten their hands on these already, and they've been using maybe some older batteries, and they're hitting the LVC either right on takeoff the first few seconds right. into the air or not long into the flight. It doesn't pull a ton of current, but if you have an older battery, if it's cold outside, you're gonna hit that low voltage cutoff sooner and kind of in typical low voltage cutoff fashion, the ESC pulses the motors. So that way, and you can audibly hear that. Uh, on top of that, we actually do have telemetry data, yep. which we're gonna show you here in a minute with the DX6E transmitter. Uh, this is one of our first ultra micros that has that telemetry data, which is really cool. So you can monitor the voltage of the battery from your transmitter, you can set up alerts there. But again, on top of that, you do have that LVC as well. So. Right. Yeah. And I do want to touch up on it a little bit, guys. So notice that the assembly was like, what, five seconds? Uh, I didn't assemble it yet. <laughs> it's already pretty much assembled. Well, uh, so it does, it comes in a small box. Right. Right. Very small box. Some people have likened it to a, uh, like a medium pizza box. Sure. I think it's about that. That's pretty close. It's pretty sure. close. Yeah. Pretty close to a medium pizza. Right. So we'll go ahead and we're going to do the unboxing portion here for you. So I'm going to open the box. Uh, there's a foam support that holds the thing in place. You pull out the airframe and it's mostly assembled as you guys can see. So we're kind of joking when we say that there's gonna be a lot of assembly involved in this model. There is a package of accessories and what you guys will see in here are a few things. First and foremost, the vertical fins. You do have to plug those in. Right. Now I know some guys have asked, should they glue them in? We never really glued them in, so I don't think you need to. You could potentially use some double-sided tape, some hot glue uh, to make it a little less permanent, but also still easy to remove, uh, uh, but also still more secure. But that said, when you plug these in, they are a nice snug fit and they're easy to pull out, but they also have never come out in flight. Right. No matter how hard we've flown it, I've never blown a fin off. Yeah, I so haven't either, speak. guys. You can use tape if you want to, if it makes you feel more secure about it. You can use tape, you can use glue. You don't really have to have it, but it's, it's there if you want to use it. 
so that's it. The unboxing and assembly portion of the video is now complete. Yes. <laughs> All right. World record so timing there. Whole that is time. that is a very <laughs> nice thing about. Of course, most of our ultra micro airplanes tend to come fully assembled. This particular one does require you to put those vertical fins in, and that was to keep the box smaller so we could put more into shipping cartons. There was no reason to install the fins when they're that easy to pop out and pop in place. Right. And then it can go back in the box if you wanted to, and it takes up less room too. Uh, right. Whether you're storing it in you know your shop or anywhere else in the garage, whatnot. So uh, very easy to assemble. Again, the vertical fins were in that package. We we also have a metal skid, which I'll install here so you guys can see this in action. The airplane doesn't have landing gear, but it does have this optional use nose skid in case you're flying over a, like a rough surface into a hard surface. If you're just flying over concrete, you'd probably want to install this because it helps to protect the propellers when you're landing. Also, you can, you can actually take off and land um, by just kind of... Just belly land it. Yeah. You guys have the delta rig, the same thing. They're pretty so you guys simple. can see it, it's protecting the propellers, so it's keeping those from contacting the ground. It does rub a little bit on the foam here on the bottom, but you can easily take off and land on smooth surfaces. You don't want to have any cracks or anything that this hook could put, or this you know landing skid could potentially right. get caught up in. But you can take off and land on those smooth surfaces. It's also protected in case you do have an emergency landing in a you know not so great area. That said, primarily I personally fly it over grass. Fly it in the front yard, fly it in the backyard, fly it at a local park. Uh, obviously, be sure that you have plenty of space to fly, that you're a plenty skilled pilot, and that also you're allowed to fly in the area that you so choose to fly in. But the nice thing about ultra micro models is you can fly them in more places and smaller spaces. Right, absolutely. So that is a very, very big deal. So I, you guys can see that. I also want to mention, guys, that if you are an experienced pilot, you can fly these in really close quarters. Like a, yes. you can fly like a baseball diamond, you can fly inside at your, you know, your local high school gym. If you guys are good enough as a pilot, you can do that. Super simple, super easy to do. Yeah, I think that's what it comes down to. It's really more about your skill level and comfort level. The smaller the space, the more control that you have to input. Right. It's not necessarily hard to do, but it does take more effort. And so you have to be very comfortable flying it uh, outside probably first before you move inside. The other thing I'll point out is we do include an extra set of propellers, which is a nice touch. In case you do happen to crash, the airplane itself is very durable because it's EPP foam. Right. The propellers, of course, are plastic, so you could break those, especially if you land on a hard surface without having that skid installed. Uh, that's a potential issue. So just watch out for that. That said, I've flown it quite a bit. I have had some hard landings from uh, botching maneuvers, and so far I haven't personally broken any propellers, but again, Spare propellers in the box, and of course these are available separately as well. Sure. So what battery does it use? So it is that 1S 500 milliamp 25C battery that we recommend, so 3.7 volt. Okay. It does need to have the more standard two-pin red JST connector. There are other types of JST connectors, two-pin, three-pin, so on and so forth, different models of them. This is the more standard red two-pin connector that's been used in a lot of applications over the years. These batteries are somewhat common. A lot of guys may already have these from uh, some quadcopters in particular, like sure. the Blade MQX, Blade uh, 180QX, some of the, uh, like the Ozone, I think, right. use this yep. as well. Uh, Blade 120SR, if I'm not mistaken, I think yep. that uses this battery as well. And there are other applications where people may have bought these batteries may already have them if you don't have any of these batteries the nice thing is they're relatively inexpensive right they're less than 10 bucks uh, also you get five to ten minutes of flight time so it's not short flight times and you can get longer flight times if you throttle back more if you guys check out and when we post this on YouTube and maybe even in the comments here after the Facebook live today we'll post a link to our flight talk video where I fly with this battery a combination of some slow and smooth flying and also some 3d aerobatic flying and I got about seven and a half minutes uh, when I fly it kind of typical I get about that. When I throttle back and cruise, I had 12, 13, 14 minutes sometimes. When I fly really aggressive 3D the whole time, I get about five minutes. So you'll probably wanna have a couple of these batteries. The one reason we chose 1S for this model instead of the typical 2S batteries that we used is because it's easier to charge. You don't need a balanced charger. You don't need a special adapter. For those that are familiar with the 2S batteries that come with our, or, or recommended for our other ultra micros, they have that three pin connector. Right. And so you know you have to have that kind of yep. special charge lead slash balance adapter into a charge lead and those aren't as common. Um, and so the nice thing about this, you just need to have kind of a typical JST charge lead. So you can see here, we've got the female JST connector. We've got the two bullet connectors. A lot of guys probably already have these right. or those multi pigtails. Remember those sure. that are popular for a couple years there, they'll have those on there. If you have a smart charger, which a lot of guys have now, um, they will have the already built in IC3 connector. And so we do actually sell a, an IC3 to JST connector for those applications. Right. So you plug that in the side there and boom, you can charge 
but it again is less cumbersome than having a balance connector and having to deal with a balance adapter. Sure. So that's one of the nice things. And at the same time, it's still brushless. It still has a lot of power and good efficiency, good flight time. Right. So absolutely, I would agree. Definitely um, has a lot of power. One of our other guys actually want to know what makes this a this UMX stand out compared to some of our other ones? I would say the capabilities because it can fly slow and light and floaty and sporty, but then you can also fly 3D aerobatics. We haven't had a lot of airplanes that do both of those well. This does both of them well. So I would say it's probably the widest flight envelope we've ever had in Ultra Micro. You can obviously hover it, which is somewhat 3D flying. You can high alpha Harrier it around, which is nice. But if you just fly in level flight throttle back, you can fly it about third to half throttle, and it's a good speed, not too fast. Also, what I like about it, because it is a delta wing platform, and because it does have good power, also it has AS3X built in, you can fly it in the wind. Sure. Even though it weighs less than three ounces ready to go, it's like, what is it, I think 65 grams or something like that? It's yeah. very, very lightweight with the battery. And so you, usually that light of an airplane, you can't fly in any wind at all. But because this is a delta wing platform, doesn't have a lot of side area to get kind of pushed around, because it has brushless motors with good power, because it has AS3X, you can fly it in some wind and still enjoy it. So I think that's what sets this apart. Also, of course, most durable yet because it's made out of the EPP foam. Right. Right, yeah. absolutely. I think another cool feature on this particular model is the thrust differential you get on yeah. the yaw control. So if you guys haven't checked out our launch video that supports this product, definitely check it out. There's some really cool thrust differential maneuvers you can do on this to get some really, really yeah, cool Yeah, why don't I show uh, that really quick in, in action. So it is a four channel airplane. Right. Well, technically it's a five channel airplane, right? Uh, six channel, because if you want to use the optional LED It lights. could be six yeah. channels, yes. So you can fly with a minimum of a five channel transmitter because you need that fifth channel to select between safe select and AS3X right. or you know non-safe select mode uh, so that would be channel 5 if you install the optional lights Cody has those installed in his there and we'll show you guys that in a minute here you can use channel 6 to toggle between different light LED sequences lighting sequences and colors yeah. kind of like uh, our uh, night radiant right very some of the night radiant guys yeah. and they're very vibrant colors too like you guys could actually fly the UMX Alteryx with the LED lighting kit at night which is really cool very cool so again we've got your typical kind of four channel controls we've got elevons here so your elevator you've got ailerons and those are called elevons because they're both an aileron and an elevator at the same right. time. So they can do that. And of course, we got AS3X going now. We have the option, I just flipped the switch to the safe mode. So when I give it an input, it tries to counteract that. And of course, AS3X, you're gonna probably hear that movement. You hear That's going, the yeah. servos trying to keep things smooth. So if it's windy outside, it tries to keep it locked in. That said, if I move a, move a control, then I take over control. So AS3X does not get in the way. Uh, but then I'm gonna show you guys the really cool function, which is the differential thrust. So that gives us yaw control. So we basically have throttle control and rudder control using the motors because there's independent ESCs for each motor. So I'm gonna right. show you that really quick. Throttle up here a little bit. So you can see that, and if I apply yaw, you can probably hear one motor speed up and one motor slow down, and it's yawing the airplane. Pretty darn cool. That is cool. And when that gives you guys the ability to do some wicked flat spins, it's yes. really cool stuff, guys. Really cool flat spins. You can actually Harrier and hover it because you have that yaw control. And that's because we have the differential thrust without having a complex you know, servo plus rudder mechanism right. to get that control. And like you said, those flat spins, they're freaking, they're wild. I don't think we have another UMX model that could probably do as flat spins as well as this camera. No, it's unbelievable. And what's really cool is if you watch our flight talk video in particular, you'll see that even with AS3X turned on, when I let go of the controls, it neutralizes very quickly and comes right out of the flat spin almost instantly. But what's really cool is when you fly with safe select turned on, we actually increase the flight envelope with safe select active on this model. And you can perform aerobatics, which right. is unusual. Most of our aircraft that have safe select do not allow you to raise the nose too much, to roll around too much, to have a lot of yaw control. But with this particular model, what we did is we opened that envelope you can Harrier, no problem. You can keep the nose pretty high. It won't let you flip it over. It won't let you do right. a loop. Uh, it does have that pitch angle limit. It's just instead of having like 20 or 30 degrees of pitch, we now give you more than that. And then on top of that, we also give you a lot of yaw control. Normally we limit the rudder when safe select is on, so you don't have the ability to get into a spin. That's not the case here. We want you to be able to get into a spin. So if you guys watch the RC Sailors video in particular, you can see Abby performing flat spins on her first flight with safe select turned on just by using the rudder. Right. Add some rudder, it'll do a quick flat spin, you let go, it comes right out. Right out. With yep. AS3X on, 
you will come out of the spin pretty quickly. It will not self-level. It'll stop spinning. You have to fly out of that. But with safe on, when you let go, it goes right back to level. So for those that aren't familiar with safe select, it's optional. You don't have to use it. It pretty much is automatically assigned to channel five. You can choose the switch that you put that on. We typically put that on this B switch here. With safe select on, you can't bank too much to get upside down and crash. You can't pitch up too much and you can't pitch down too much. Right. So safe will keep you from crashing. Also, when you let go of the stick, at aileron and elevator stick, it goes back to level. Right, so if awesome. you ever lose orientation, let's say you do a wicked flat spin, maybe you end up inverted, maybe you end up far away. If you just flip to safe select, it'll level right out for you. It's amazing. In that's fact, awesome. you can just turn safe select on, let the turn the throttle off and let it glide down to a landing. Right. It'll pretty much on, on grass land itself without doing any damage. It's pretty impressive. Uh, but again, we've opened those envelope limits to allow you to perform aerobatics in safe select mode. You turn that off and you put on AS3X and you have unlimited potential. You can fly inverted, you can do inverted flat spins, you can do point rolls, you can do slow rolls, you can do inverted Harrier, upright Harrier, hovering. Basically, there's no limitations. One thing that we did do a little different on this model, which is something we haven't recommended on other models, is we actually recommend combining your flight modes, so AS3X and Safe Select, oh, yeah, with sure. your dual rates. So uh, I think James came up with that. It's a really nice thing because now with one switch, that's it's a three position switch on most of our, our Spectrum transmitters right. that have this B switch. Uh, in the a position that's closest to the back of the transmitter, that's Safe Select on. So with that, we usually have it set to high rates 100%. Sure. So instead of assigning the uh, the dual rates to different switches. So a lot of people will separate, some people, not everybody these days, will separate aileron elevator and rudder to separate switches. Some people, a lot of people, myself included, combine pretty much everything onto this F switch. So it's high, medium, low. Right. Or high and low, depending on if you have a two position or a three position switch. But in the manual, we recommend assigning your dual rates to the same switch as your flight modes. So in safe select, you have high rates which allows you to perform those aerobatics. Now, for what it's worth, we did limit the throws in safe selects. You still don't have absurd amounts of control. It's not skittish, right. uh, but then you can perform those aerobatics. Then we recommend in the middle switch position, it's AS3X now with low rates. It's like 70% rates on right. elevator, aileron, and rudder. That makes it nice and smooth, easy to fly. You can do easy loops. You can do easy rolls if you want to. It's not skittish. You can add some expo if you want. And then in the third position, it's, it's still AS3X. It didn't change the flight mode at all, but now we just went from basically low rates to high rates. Right. So we've got high rate safe select, low rate AS3X, high rate AS3X on one switch. It's nice because then you don't have to fumble with the second right. switch. And then it's cool because you can do in, in the high rates AS3X all kinds of crazy stuff. Sure, sure. Crazy it's stuff. super handy to have it all in one switch, you know, reach up and grab a bunch of different things. Yep. It's very cool. Oh, and one thing that I didn't show on the screen of the DX6E here, we did update this transmitter to the latest software for the DX series transmitter. So if you have a DX6E, a DX80, DX6, DX8, DX9, the latest iterations of those software have our new telemetry data screens, which are compatible with smart electronics. For example, the smart ESC that's in the new right. P51 Mustang. Uh, but on top of that, even a model like this, which doesn't necessarily have a smart ESC, it does have a telemetry capable receiver. Right. And it will give you the voltage of the battery at your transmitter. That's awesome, guys. So you can see visually how many volts your battery is. You can adjust the low voltage alarm in the transmitter. So the transmitter can alert you before even the airplane right. indicates low voltage cutoff. If you want, it's up to you. You can set that. But it's kind of a nice little feature that most ultra micros never had in the past. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah, I think another thing with, with ultra micros is, is they're smaller, they can get further away from you. So you can't always hear the motors in case yes. they're, they're indicating LVC. So now with that feedback directly on your transmitter, guys, it's it's hugely impactful. You know when your battery is low and you can just land when you need to. Yes, very good point. And so the nice thing too then about that is uh, you can protect your battery so you don't over discharge your battery every time. Even though they're not expensive batteries and a lot of these are lower discharge rated so they can handle some over discharge a little bit better than higher end, higher discharge rate batteries. Uh, it still is beneficial to not kill your battery in flight right. land with no power, run out of power some inopportune place where it ends up in a pond or a pool or on your roof. <laughs> Right, absolutely. I, I know this. <laughs> it can Sometimes happen. Sometimes it happens. <laughs> Some of us have that, that kind of experience for sure. Yes. So um, I was going to say, while I am going to set up the LED lights on this guy, Michael did want to ask yeah. you if uh, you would be comfortable flying one around this room. 
Oh, you know, I might be able to. I haven't actually flown any of these particular ones. These are all bound up to the transmitter for the first time today. I could try it. Well, I'll tell you this. We'll do it at the end of the video. We'll see how well it goes. Uh, if you guys want, you can also see the Flight Talk video, which we'll link in the comments below. And again, on our YouTube version of this video, we'll post that in the description and also in the pin post at the top. That video, you can see me doing everything outdoors. In our launch video, we call it the original marketing video, you'll see us flying inside of what we call a field, field house slash indoor gym. Uh, it has plenty of control to do that. If you are an experienced enough pilot, you can easily hover and harrier this inside your house. Now, I'm not gonna recommend that for most people because if you knock over a lamp, you hit your TV, you hit your cat, you hit your wife, or you get a stuck in her hair, which I might've done at one point in my life with a helicopter, uh, <laughs> it usually doesn't go over well. So, I um, wouldn't expect it to. But you can fly it in smaller spaces. If you have a two car garage or something and you pull your cars out, you can fly this thing around in there with enough skill you can easily harrier it and hover it inside a space like that. But obviously if you want to do level flight yet, you have to right. get in a, a much more open space. Uh, but you can fly it indoors, you can fly it in smaller spaces than typical models. And so this has the optional LED lights installed. Yep. And I believe those are $19.99. Yeah, they're 20 bucks so, guys. And I think it's honestly, look, I mean, it's the LEDs install in, in channels along the bottom yeah. half of the fuselage here. Um, but it shows through the top portion of the actual wing guys. So if you can see that, um, there's five different settings of LEDs that you get. So you get the standard uh, fluctuations yeah. if you want to hold that up for them. And then you have... Oh, let's do this. We you might turn, turn the lights light. off. Yeah, turn them off a little bit here. There you go. Perfect. So you got five different actual combinations you can use. Very similar to the night reading as we mentioned earlier. And you guys can just choose oh, which ones cool. you prefer. I think that was really cool. And again, it's it's so lit up, guys, that you're actually able to, to fly these at night. So um, for 20 bucks, I think that's a no-brainer. I for yep. sure, I got one. It's It's really cool. So that's using channel six. You would need a six channel transmitter to, to right. actuate the, the light changes. And then this is my favorite part. Check out the tail lights. Yeah, tail lights, guys. That's important. It's when a you're simple thing, but it's you. cool. You gotta have it. Yeah, and when you're doing flat spins, it looks really, really wicked. So again, those are optional. They are only $20. I suspect a lot of people will install them. They're very lightweight. They're just strips that go in the bottom here. They light up the bottom, of course, but then you can see it through the top of the wing. And even when it's pitch black outside, you have very, very good Absolutely. orientation of this model. It lights the entire fuselage guys up and it's very cool stuff. Um, I think what's really cool is, is the actual, the LEDs are modded in a way that the tips actually show navigational lights. So it's the typical oh, yes. green the and the typical and, and, red. Yep. So on one of the actual uh, LED sequences, you have the red and the green LED tips, which is really cool guys. Um, but again, there is five different combinations here, very similar to the Night Radiant. So if you want to play around with them, it's just a simple plug and play. There's nothing they to do from a soldering standpoint. There's little guides on the channel oh, on the bottom choices. along the fuselage. Oh, Very super cool. simple stuff. Yeah, there's just a lot of cool choices. You can personalize, you're flying with buddies. You can all have different different light sequences going on. Yep. Uh, that's a really nice feature. So again, that does require a six channel transmitter. Out of the box, it's a minimum of five channel transmitter. Uh, what we're showing here today is we did show you guys the DX6E earlier. That's kind of the minimum radio that a lot of guys that have purchased a higher end radio are kind of going with. Uh, but that said, if you have a ready to fly airplane from us, for example, either uh, an apprentice or maybe in Hobby Zone Aero Scouts, because very popular mini sure. apprentice the carbon cub s plus you probably have your hands on a dxe transmitter right so you'll notice that we have the dxe and if you look really closely in the upper right hand corner there's usually a slight a small number or a letter i'm sorry in this case this is the s version the dxe s uh, there's a dxe a which comes with the apprentice slightly different internal hardware configurations sometimes also different switches right those transmitters are technically six channel transmitters right. so you do have and you just bound it to the dxe a which yep. is what comes with the apprentice the s works the same and so channel five is your flight modes that we showed on the dxe earlier and then he's using the the bind button right which the is channel panic six. button is basically yep. channel six and that's how he was toggling between the different uh light sequences now right. on a different transmitter you might have to assign that to your momentary button sure. to be able to select that you can put on a switch and go back and forth but that's a little bit more of a difficult thing the nice thing about spectrum transmitters especially the computer transmitters is you can assign those switches assign those channels as you so so prefer right. uh, and so that's nice because if you have one of these transmitters you already have what you need to bind to this airplane right very and again cool only needs that that five slash six channels to get it working. Right. Yeah. Uh, Chris uh, Langley asked, uh, how do you connect the lights uh, straight to the battery or has a plug on the receiver? So Chris, to answer your question, there's actually a port right on the receiver. So it yes. uh, does not run in tandem or in line with the battery, so to speak. It just plugs right onto the flight controller and you just guide the wires through the channels. You can tape them down. You could use uh, compatible glue, yeah. um, anything. It's really simple. It's, you can install these in about five minutes. 
Super yep. simple. Very easy to install. Runs, of course, off the main flight battery, but right. it goes through the board, so that way you have the ability to change those sequences exactly. through the processor. Yep. So really cool feature, a nice add-on. We originally were going to plan on including those in the box, but because they are a little bit more expensive, we didn't want to burden the cost of the airplane with the lights for those that may not want it. And the nice thing is now, down the road, if you want, everybody can buy them, and they're easy to install. So right. we did that kind of from the get-go. Uh, I'll point out the price then on that. This is only available on a bind and fly basic. So bind and fly basic means it's ready to bind to a spectrum transmitter. So it does have, of course, the servos installed for the Elevons. It has the twin brushless motors. It has the control unit, which has two ESCs in it. It has the gyros for AS3X. It has the accelerometers for safe select. It has the uh, receiver, the spectrum receiver that's in there. And all of that's internal. So it's basically pulled out of the box stick the fins in it, bind it to your transmitter, go fly. You do have to make some adjustments Minor on the radio as you so choose. Yeah. Uh, but it does only come in that bind and fly basic version. You do need a battery. It doesn't yep. come with a battery or charger. That's why it's the bind and fly basic. Many years ago, I've seen some people ask this recently. What's the difference between a bind and fly and a bind and fly basic? A bind and fly includes the battery and charger. Right. It's everything but the transmitter. A bind and fly basic is no transmitter, no battery, no charger. Right. The reason most of our airplanes are bind and fly basic now is because most people have a battery and a charger or at least a charger and they just need a battery. Right. So we don't include the battery and charger anymore because people have preferences, it gets the price down a little bit. So the price on this one is a bind and fly basic is $119.99, so it's $120. US. Uh, it, the price, of course, varies in other markets. Sure. Uh, but that said, it's a really good value because it's actually less expensive than most of our other brushless powered ultra micro airplanes. Absolutely. For example, the ever popular UMX Timber is $130, $129.99. That's just one brushless motor. Right. This is two brushless motors in an EPP airframe that's extremely durable and extremely capable. I Absolutely. love what it can do. It's, at first, when I saw it, I remember thinking, okay, it's kind of like Delta Ray meets uh, F27. Right. And I thought, okay, it's gonna fly like that. But when I saw that it could do 3D, I was like, oh man, this is awesome. This is outrageously capable. A lot of people, a very wide audience of people are gonna be interested in this. People who have not flown a lot. And so I would say it's not for a beginner guy, guys. This is not a first airplane at all. Right. But if you've flown any of our trainer airplanes successfully, you can take off and land, you can potentially fly this in safe select with safe on pretty easily. Uh, that said, I probably would still recommend if you're going to do aerobatics, you have a little more experience under your belt, at least maybe a more aerobatic airplane, a more capable airplane. Right. Um, and then if you've never flown 3D aerobatics before, this isn't a terrible airplane to learn it on. I, it I does agree. handle a little different than like an extra 300 would, sure. but it does teach you the rudder skills, the throttle management skills to harrier and to hover. So it's a really good tool for that. So again, you can have not a lot of experience and enjoy it, and you can have a lot of experience, like yeah, myself and some it. of the other guys here in the office, Cody included, we just all love flying it. Yeah. One of these days, we're gonna get like 20 of these things together with the lights. So that's what we should that do. Would, yeah, that'd be really cool. When the yeah. weather warms up, I think it's gonna be 18 degrees tonight. Yeah, that's terrible. So we're not going out tonight and flying. <laughs> no, no, we're not. You can fly it tonight. I'm no, not flying I'll, with I'll you. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> yeah, so that is the airplane. Again, you can bind it to any spectrum transmitter with DSMX or DSM2. You do need the 1S 500 milliamp battery. They're right. available for less than $10. A lot of hobby shops will have those, online retailers. And anything kind of probably from like a 350 up to a 750 will probably work. Maybe even the and 800s. there is some room to play around with CD yeah. in there, guys. So you can mount it all the way towards the nose, towards the center of the fuselage. There's you, different batteries. Certainly, we can accommodate with that. Yep. And then you'll need a JST charge lead if you don't have one. We can link to these particular leads uh, in our description. Also, for smart battery chargers, I don't know if a lot of people know this. We have this IC3 to female bullet connectors. Sure. So if you happen to have some of these older style bullet connector. Uh, charge leads, if you buy this particular lead for a smart charger, you can plug in your older banana plug equipped leads. This right. is something that I love having uh, in my flight box. And then on top of that, we also do have this Spectrum Micro LiPo charger. It's a four port charger that has most of the 1S battery connectors. It's only 1S batteries, by right. the way, I should point that out. It is AC-DC, but what's nice is when you plug it in, you have the ability with the knob here, you can adjust the current Charging all the way sure. from 0 0.05 up to 1.2 amps. On these batteries, I just charge them at 1.2 amps. It's a little over 2C and they're fine. Uh, you can adjust that knob. It has a digital readout so you can see the voltage. It has the JST connector. It has the larger ultra micro connector. It has the ultra micro connector yep. and the Molex connector. So all of that's there. It's got four ports. It's AC-DC. It's pretty inexpensive. Right. 
nice tool to have, but of course you can use any charger as long as you have an appropriate JST charge lead for yeah. that. I think that charger that you're holding up there, Jason, is probably one of the best bangs for your, for your dollar for sure, guys. It's got pretty much all the popular uh, yeah. one cell connectors on there and there's no adapters needed. It just plugs right onto the display. You can set your custom charge rate. So if you guys are looking for a one cell charger yes. that is pretty much capable with your entire inventory, do check out that charger. We can link that in the description for you guys. Yep, yep, good, good thing to have if you don't already have one. If you have a lot of our 1S Ultra Micro models, for example, maybe you started to fly with a Sport Cub S or a right. Champ, you're gonna have 1S batteries from that. Oh, there's still a fair number of our models, both in the E-Flight lineup and the Hobby Zone lineup that use 1S Ultra Micro sure. batteries, all, all the way from like the 70 milliamp up to the 200 milliamp. Of course, we have a lot of Blade helicopters that use that and also the, uh, the Blade Ultra, Ultra Micro um, drones as well. Right. So, yeah, a little bit of everything. Uh, I think that covers pretty much most of the details. Yeah, Are there um, any other questions that came up? I have not seen any other comments, guys. If you guys have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them in here. Um, we will be monitoring during the live and after the live. Um, this yes. video will be on YouTube, so if you're watching this, this will be on YouTube later. Yep. Um, and we appreciate you guys being here. Yes, um, so that's absolutely. the E-Flight UMX Ultrix. Very excited about it. It is yeah. available as of today. Uh, it shipped to stores about a week ago in the US. It'll be available in other markets a little later. So by the time you guys are seeing this video, you should be able to get your hands on one if you haven't already. They are selling fast, and I will tell you this, that once I flew it in public last week and guys got to see it at the flying field, and then on top of that, when people saw our Flight Talk video, you can see the comments. People said, I wasn't interested until I saw this video. Right. Once they watched the video and saw how wide the flight envelope is from easy flying, but also being aerobatic capable and safe, all the way to the 3D aerobatic flying, they're kind of like, dang, right. that is unique. Well, I think what's going on is, is people see the airframe, Yes. And the airframe is more or less uh, very similar to that of Ooh. the Delta Rig, for example, <laughs> which is considered a, a, a very considered like a very entry level trainer, guys. Yes. So um, I think that's the what really turned people off initially is the look because it has a Delta Rig configuration. That's not the case. This airplane is extremely capable, as Jason had mentioned. I couldn't have said, used a better word for it, guys. Um, whether you're going from beginner or you're wanting to do some really heavy 3D stuff, this airplane will do it all. It's yes, very cool. so it's our most uniquely capable ultra micro yet, our most durable ultra micro yet, and probably, honestly, I would say one of our most fun to fly. There's a few models over the years that I felt like are the best of the best when it comes to our sure. Ultramarker lineup. One of my all-time favorites, the UMX Timber. If you don't have one of those, do yourself a favor and go buy one. In fact, buy two. Put one on floats, <laughs> put one on wheels, and enjoy it all the time. And then get one of these to go along with it because this is almost as much fun. No float option. Although I wouldn't be surprised if somebody puts floats on one at one point or another. Uh, but if you're interested in doing any aerobatic flying, also if you're interested in flying at night, you can get the optional lights. You really can't beat the value of this, the performance of this, the wide flight envelope, the durability, the super simple assembly. Right, <laughs> less than five seconds. Less promise. than five seconds and you're ready to go. Um, and then also just the, the, if you're not a super aggressive 3D pilot, for example, you can potentially become one with an airplane as simple as this. Yeah. It's really, very, really very cool. Very cool product, guys, absolutely. Yeah. All right, well, I think we're gonna wrap this up, guys. Again, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in here. We will monitor that after the live today. Um, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to this video. We really appreciate that. And uh, we appreciate you guys being here. Thank you. Yes, thank you.